Scott Squared and Emily the Embellisher bringing you yet another mediocre ski podcast where we not only welcome you into our ski fam, but we bring the ski fam experience to you. A fun, laid back, and informational approach to the ski and snowboard community that you're going to love whether you've skied once, twice, or are the best skier on the mountain. But don't get too excited, we're still better than you. Whether you're on the early morning drive, carving up your favorite trail, or are about to send it off a gnarly jump, listen in for some fast facts and a possible laugh. So friends, lower that chairlift bar, keep your tips up, and get ready for some ski speak. Who's ready to get extreme, Ski Fam? Welcome to episode four of Ski Speak. I am Scott and I am extreme. I am extreme Emily. And this is your other host, Tardif. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. So <laughs> he's not very extreme. He's not on par. <laughs> so what do you guys think of when you think of X? Math. Like algebra. Ten? I think 10. 10 is pretty Seven. obvious. Roman numeral Ooh. should... Everything with an X is yeah. probably a 10. <laughs> I think of x lax Help you poop. Oh, Ooh. that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sex. Sex. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Sex has three X's in it sometimes. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, or also porn has the three X's. I think that's exactly what he was alluding to. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome <laughs> for all of you fam out there that didn't know. <laughs> I think of DMX, the song X Go and Give It To You, which oh, nice. also reminds me of Thomas the Dank Engine. Go watch that. <laughs> you said Tom Thomas the Dank Engine? <laughs> yes. Dank. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's Thomas the Tank Engine with DMX. It's pretty dank. <laughs> what else do you need? <laughs> I think the X could stand for extreme. Oh. Whoa. Mind like blown. Like extreme Emily. <laughs> <laughs> so this game, <laughs> this game, <laughs> this game. <laughs> so episode four, we're going to talk to you all about the X games. The reason why they called them the X games, first of all, kind of quite obviously extreme sports. Extreme. Very much Extreme. Emily? Extreme! <laughs> um, so another reason they call them the X Games was that they're targeting the Gen X audience. Huh. So that's kind of interesting. And the last one is actually wrapping it back into what Emily said. With X being the unknown variable in math, the X Games are meant to showcase the unknown element. It's funny, I never thought that there would be a lot of thought that went into the name itself. It's more thoughtful than I was anticipating. Yeah, it's more than just the extreme games. Yeah. Oh, definitely. The first X Games were originally called the Extreme Games. Then, after the first year, it transitioned to become the X Games for the reasons that we just told you. The first year that this started was back in 1995, and I'm not sure why they chose it, but Middletown, Providence, and Newport, Rhode Island were the location of that first Extreme Games. <laughs> Those are very extreme That's so places. so random. <laughs> yeah. Newport, like... The most extreme, extreme place <laughs> for, like, vacationing. It's just a bunch of mansions on a beach. Yeah. <laughs> so, back then, the first competitions were skateboarding, BMX, which is biking, of course, uh, street luge, and for whatever reason, it included bungee jumping. Whoa. How do you score that? <laughs> what they were doing apparently would just bungee jump and they would jump off and whatever tricks they would do in the air they'd get scored on that that's terrifying to me the one thing i would not do is bungee jumping i would do skydiving i would not do bungee jumping so on the note of skydiving one of the things that i had read too is in the early days of the x games they actually had something called sky surfing i don't know if either of you know what that is no basically you jump out of a plane and you skydive with like a snowboard <laughs> <What>? <laughs> And you like do tricks and it's ridiculous skydiving i think you meant that as a joke but it was legit also an event 
So these were like really actually extreme things they did. They don't do them anymore, probably for safety issues. <laughs> yeah, someone probably got hurt at some point. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, did they like land on ground or water or snow? Well, they had a parachute like you do when you're normally skydiving. So yeah. they just parachute down somewhere. I don't know if it was land water. I don't know where they did it. Huh. But I saw one quick video and was just sitting there like, holy shnikes. <laughs> and so that was for the summer X Games? Yeah. That used to be one of the events. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be kind of crappy to do in the winter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frozen, like, icicles coming off your beard, darn it. <laughs> not Scott, because he doesn't have a beard. Sorry, Scott. <laughs> uh, loser. That's not very extreme. <laughs> no. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. Um... But actually, especially the summer X Games, um, did you guys ever play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater growing up? Yes. That was like one of my first introductions to extreme Who sports. didn't? Yeah. Who didn't play that? I feel like that was a staple to our childhood. <laughs> yeah. And also, Emily, I'm actually surprised you have. <laughs> so I have a younger brother and he had it. Oh, there you go. And I would yeah. try to play. I was terrible. I really didn't get how to play. But I would watch him play, which was generally how the video gaming world for us worked. He would play the game yeah. I would watch, unless it was like Mario or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I would play it on the GameCube a bunch, I think was really my first exposure to it. I know it's older than that, but that was that was my experience with it. And then, oh my god, another inspiration for me was Rocket Power. Oh, yeah! Wiggity, wiggity, wiggity. <laughs> yeah, wiggity, wiggity. Wiggity, wiggity, wiggity. Yeah, wiggity, wiggity. yeah, yeah, yeah. They were just so extreme, like... It just that's... <laughs> extreme cartoons. <laughs> it was called Rocket Power, like. <laughs> but <laughs> my favorite character was Tito, the laid-back Hawaiian dude. Oh my god! After the vodka, he's my favorite character too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if Tito wasn't your favorite character, you didn't appreciate it in the right way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who were the characters? Otto, Reggie, Twister, Sam. Whoa. Who was the dad? Was it Raymundo? Yeah, that sounds right. Maybe. I don't know. Raymundo? <laughs> Maybe I'm just making that up. <laughs> yeah, the guy with the green hat. And the green hat. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Rocket Power, they were like kinds of things that just reminded me of Summer X Games. And honestly, I've I've never really seen them. And I think mostly, you know, we're a Ski Speak podcast. We're going to focus on the Winter X Games. Uh, the, the first one of the Winter X Games was actually just two years after, in 1997, at uh, Big Bear Lake in SoCal. Why is it always summer that goes first? I feel like winter's always, like, after the fact. Less logistics, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, a lot cheaper. Oh, you might not I have think. to drive snow to your location in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I was thinking it was just because less people like winter was part of it too. I think it's also that. It's interesting because the first Winter X Games in 97 was actually the first X Games they ever showed on TV. ESPN Ooh. is a big sponsor and I think they created the X Games. Yep. The first one they showed was this 1997 Winter X Games. Hmm. So maybe my yeah. theory is proven wrong. Maybe. What? Emily being wrong? That's weird. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you keep me around to make you guys look smart. <laughs> Maybe. Don't tell the ski fam that. <laughs> oh, if they haven't noticed already, <laughs> they're for a long haul. <laughs> so after it being hosted at Bear Mountain to good old Krusty Butt, Crested Butte out in Colorado for a couple of years, then it actually went over to the East Coast and came over to Mount Snow, which I always find interesting, but they are known for having a really good park, Corinthia Park. We went there a couple of years ago, although <laughs> my experience was not so great there. Tell us about it. So Tardif and I went with a friend and we decided to head over to Corinthia because we had never really dabbled too much in jumps, but I was determined to get big air. So it's this tiny hill where you ski down after doing a jump and then there's a magic carpet that brings you up. But we're surrounded by like... There are like a bunch of seven-year-olds zipping around us on these little jumps at the bottom of Corinthia with a magic carpet that we just ride up with kids who are literally half our height. <laughs> yeah. And they're like falling all around off of the magic carpet and like their skis are getting caught. So at the end of it, it was just easier to take off your skis and walk up the hill. So I did this and I like clip into my bindings 
and uh, I get ready and I'm like, okay, this is my last jump. I'm ready to go. I literally jump out of my skis and my boot comes out of my bindings and I face plant flat on the ground. Extreme. (laughs) (laughs) Extreme falling. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Like, if you guys don't have boobs, it was so painful. It was awful. (laughs) And then... That's a good point. Yeah. (laughs) That sounds like, I wish I had seen it, and I'm sad that I didn't, but it sounds like quite a fall. (laughs) Yeah, I don't even think we had the GoPro on. Like, I don't even think we can relive this again. So, it's just burned in Scott's... Yeah, it'll forever live in your heads. (laughs) Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the X Games coming to Mount Snow was kind of a big deal, right? As Tardif said earlier, it brought the X Games to the East Coast, which was really cool. And there was a lot of excitement around this. It was one of the biggest crowds that they've ever had in Winter X Games history. It was over 80,000 people. And it was this was actually the first year that they added the Super Pipe as a Winter X Games event, one of their most popular events to this day. Yeah, it's a really cool mountain, like that whole area. Because when we were there too, there was a little race going on. So again, it was a bunch of high schoolers and middle schoolers that were just racing down. And then there were even people distanced up the trail just watching it. So we stopped for even a couple of minutes just to catch it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun watching people do tricks and stuff like that. Like if you ever have the time and are just, I don't know, you just want to wait at the bottom of some jumps, not like directly below (laughs) the jump. You know, like I'm talking at the bottom <laughs> like of the after trail. They run down. <laughs> yes. You know, it's fun to watch people really good go over and do like seven flips. <laughs> yeah, and that's actually one of the things that when I went to Park City uh, the first time with Russell and Paul, there's the one lift where you go up right next to the big jumps. And so we would watch that and that was the first time I was ever out west, so they were doing crazy stuff. But we probably have a couple stories of our terrain park experiences. No, Ooh. the one at Whistler. <laughs> <laughs> Whistler was terrifying. There was like six of us we didn't belong we're in that terrain park. And I think it was Mike who was like kind of in the way at the bottom of a jump. And he got pretty, pretty... Uh, yeah, you know, well, Mike was <laughs> also the only one who knew what he was doing. He could actually like go off some of these bigger jumps, but I think he almost collided with somebody else. And then we were all on the bottom weaving in and out of the jumps. And then that's when ski patrol was like, yo, you got to get off this run. You're not, you're not allowed here unless you're jumping. Yeah. You guys are just going all over the place. Like yeah. we didn't know the structure. We were just kind of like, we, woohoo, this is <laughs> yeah. fun. Extreme. Yeah. And it was not. So we were not doing it right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, but it's really cool when you go with people who do know those kinds of things. So I'm going to give a quick shout out to my buddy, Pat, who is a one-legged skier, but he just sends it off jumps. That's just nuts. And then his friend that I met, Trevor, he sits in one of those ski sleds. Trevor's actually the guy who went viral in that video a little while back about hopping into Corbett's Kular um, like a year ago, but we're just really crazy, crazy stuff. But anyways... So bringing this back to the X Games, since 2002, they moved the X Games over to Aspen and Buttermilk Mountain. Yeah, and this was the point in which they added some of the ski events, Ski Slope Style and Ski Superpipe. Skiing, as we've told you, was looked at as pretty snobby back in the day, and snowboarding, because it was newer, was so much more extreme. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Another fun fact is that the entire 2002 Winter Olympic snowboard freestyle team showed up a couple weeks um, before the the actual Olympics to go into the superpipe and compete in the snowboard superpipe, which is ridiculous. Why would you let your Olympic athletes go into this superpipe at the X Games and go crazy? It just seems like a risk that you wouldn't want your athletes to take. (laughs) They gotta get better. I guess. Yeah, I like wonder if they like plan that into their conditioning and training and stuff. Because sometimes, with racing anyway, like sometimes you would have like a really big race two weeks before, and then you peak that following week. But extreme sports, it would make me worried that they would get injured, because there's like a lot higher risk. Yeah, you could easily get a concussion yeah. in like two you seconds. Yeah, like one false move, <laughs> boom, go so. splat. Just like me, off the three foot jump. That was the one thing I was going to say before with Park City. When we were there this past winter, we were trying to go off of some of the real legit jumps, and we were the ballsiest we've ever been. <laughs> that was where I almost like Emily's experience, Mount Snow, just... I ejected. She jumped out of her skis, I landed and ejected my skis right <laughs> off, and I just slid down the entire backside of the jump and just laid there like, 
well, shit, now I gotta go climb all the way back up there and get my skis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't there for that one. I was at the back of the group waiting for everyone else to go because we didn't want to do it at the same time because we would have killed each other. <laughs> <laughs> like in Whistler, we've learned. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I had the GoPro on, so I'll have to dig that up and we can share that with the Ski Fam on our yes. YouTube channel. <laughs> and our new website. Yeah, oh, we didn't give a website shout out. What are we doing? Oh, yeah. Skispeakpod.com. You'll be able to find all of this sweet Ski Speak merch that you can buy to support us and represent and show off your favorite mediocre ski podcast. Check it out. Yeah, so the X Games, they've also become a lot more international at this point. It's not just in the US. Yeah, they actually also have a Winter X Games that they hold in Norway in March of every year. And I guess we haven't been entirely clear, but just to be clear, the sports that they have right now for the X Games, for the Winter X Games, are snowmobiling, skiing, snowboarding. Uh, is there anything else? They have snow biking as well as, as an event. I think that took off in recent years. Yeah, I don't know. Snow biking seems crazy to me. I've actually seen petitions online to unite skiers and snowboarders against the snow bikers, which I just think is interesting. But <laughs> uh, yeah. kind of funny though. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's the thing that brings us together. <laughs> Bring together against a common enemy. <laughs> Yeah, and the current competitions for skiing and snowboarding anyways, you have slope style, half pipe, also known as super pipe, knuckle huck, and of course, big air, which legend has it that it's named after Emily. Also known as big air archer, in case yes. you forgot. Also, she reacted really happy, but nobody could see that. <laughs> yeah. No, no noise. Just this is the second episode where she has a Zoom reaction. <laughs> it was pure joy, <laughs> is all I must say, because I am that great. So, what I'm really curious about, and uh, as I was preparing for this episode, I got down the rabbit tracks of looking and watching about like all the different X Games and. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, uh, hold uh, on. Uh, 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 uh. You're not getting away with that. You got nope. down the rabbit tracks, <laughs> not down a rabbit hole. I don't even know. <laughs> that was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know we can't let you get away with that. I know, and the it's ski okay. fam lives for these moments. <laughs> yep. I got you guys covered. I think I know what you were going to ask, but maybe we should take a second and just kind of explain what some of those events are if people don't know. Yeah. So, Emily, since you named Big Air. Yeah. So, Big Air is really cool. They go off massive jumps and then do a bunch of tricks off the jump. Slope style is a combination of rails and then a jump at the end. Yeah, it's a bunch of rails and like other features that you can like do little jumps off of onto rails or whatever. Yeah, It's kind of like create your own adventure and then with the yeah. extreme jump at the end. It's pretty cool. I liked that one. And then <laughs> the knuckle huck. <laughs> this one, I didn't know why it was named knuckle huck. And Scott was explaining that it was the way that the mountain is shaped. So at the end of like... I don't know how to explain it. At the though. bump, the top of the bump. Yeah, exactly. Like the yeah. top of the bump, then you do a trick, but you just literally use your body weight, which is really neat. Yeah, typically you don't want to land on the knuckle. Like it's a bad thing to land on the knuckle, but this guy, Marcus Cleveland, just started doing tricks off of the knuckle and it kind of took off as this new event at the X Games. I think it's sort of an unofficial bonus event, but it's gaining steam. And there's a really cool story. There's this kid named Zeb Powell who literally only wanted to do this event in the X Games, went to the X Games last year in Aspen just for knuckle hook and won gold. It's a very <laughs> unique event. Yeah, it's definitely one of the newer ones. It's definitely a lot of younger kids yeah. uh, just being a little bit creative, flying, hucking over that knuckle. Yeah. It seemed as though it was kind of a warm up for some of them. So they were mostly the new people coming to the X Games. So like they were so young, like 14 or 15 years old, tossing their bodies over the knuckle and doing a funny trick. But then they also did other events. The way I understand it, it's hard to go to multiple of the different events, but the knuckle huck seemed as though it was pretty open to allowing the scheduling for people to be able to go and attend the different events. A lot of athletes tend to do big air and slope style. They're similar enough because slope style finishes with a big air jump. And whereas half pipe, there's not too much crossover there. It's a very different concept. I'd love to see half pipe with 
the park in the beginning. So it's more of like choose your own adventure and then finishing with the half pipe, like slope style. And then you do a giant big air jump at the end, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. combine all of the events <laughs> into one thing. Basically, everything should end with big air, except knucklehead. Yes. That can be its own thing. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> One of the things we also didn't say, that we may have listeners that haven't actually seen this and know this, but you're not just going off this jump. You're doing backflips, you're doing front flips, you're doing spins, you're grabbing stuff, grabbing stuff. What? And the point is to really do a lot of tricks. And they have really fun naming styles for this, which I don't quite have a grasp on. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think it's made up after like whoever does the trick first and other times... A lot of it draws its inspiration from skateboarding. Wait a minute. So you're telling me that some of these jumps are made up by the person who does the jump? So if I do a big jump, I can name it something? If it's never been done before. <laughs> well, n <laughs> nobody does my jumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the McTardiff, that would be going over a jump and then like losing your pants when you fall face first. Because <laughs> I always lose my pants, so... Just wait till you see that debuted at the X Games this year. XXX Games. <laughs> the XXX Games. <laughs> you can have the McTardiff. Emily, you can name yours whatever you want, but I'm going to go with a, a double, triple, quadruple, backslide, left, flip, grind, tail slam, 785.4 with my eyes closed. And that's what it's going to be. <laughs> got that's... some numbers, got some direction, it's got everything yes. you need in it. That's legit. That's legit. That... That's, yep. <laughs> so do we get to see that the next time you, we ski? Oh, for sure. Ski fam, keep an eye out on the YouTube. That's going to be up in a matter of weeks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Watch it for the McTardiff, <laughs> the whatever, the McAlpazar. <laughs> I'm just throwing Mick in front of everything. It's going to be the, it's going to be the McHoney. <laughs> yes. Ooh. That's sensual. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, there are actually, uh, a lot of basic things to trick naming, at least with snowboarding anyways. I don't know if you want to go through Sure, same. We yeah. can, if we don't like what you say, we'll just cut you out later. <laughs> <laughs> True. So basically, regular stance, that's left foot forward. Goofy stance, right foot forward. Whenever they say a, a switch, that means you're going off the jump with your opposite foot. So if you're a regular stance rider, a switch jump would be with your right foot forward and vice versa. And then if you're talking about the way that they rotate like horizontally in the air, front side would be they start the jump rotating front side, whereas back side, they start it rotating backwards. Um, there's a whole bunch of different grab names. Melon is one of them. I, I don't even remember the other. Tail grab, nose grab. Tail is the back of the board. Nose is the front of the board. There's yeah. apparently a beef, beef carpaccio grab, a drunk driver grab, a... Korean bacon grab. I'm on the Wikipedia page of all the cool snowboard name trick names. <laughs> so I'm just reading them off there. Some of them are ridiculous, like I just said. Like the rusty trombone. That's a grab. It's a type of grab. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, that's all it is. <laughs> like and really, where do they come up with these? I really I just don't understand. And and just so you know, the definition of a rusty trombone is a roast beef and nose grab performed at the same time. So a roast beef is also something else. So now they're like Inception naming themselves. It's names inside of names. <laughs> Good movie, by the way. So my goal in life is to create my own jump name. Whoa. Well, don't take mine. Mine's already taken. You can't have that one. <laughs> but so there are also a lot of people to do these tricks. And this is kind of one of the staples. If you know the X Games, you probably have some athletes that come to mind. And, and don't forget, you know, while the X Games are typically held in the U.S., these athletes come from all over the world. Yeah, uh, I can honestly name so many snowboarders, mostly on the male side, but uh, definitely some of the female athletes as well. I really can't name many skiers, but this guy, Enrique Arlo, he's like the only skier. Oh, he's awesome. He's actually like this skinny little beanpole who's just filthy. Yeah, like ridiculous. <laughs> he's won so many events. If he's in an event, you want to watch it. Trust me. Skiing. <laughs> As far as snowboarders go, we already mentioned Marcus Cleveland. There's Red Gerard. Red Gerard was 18 when he won the gold medal in the last Olympics. Sebastian Tutant, Mark McMorris, he's one of my favorites. Uh, Max Perot. Mark McMorris, he was the one that was a contender against uh, Sean White, right? Meaning like for medals, most medals, won at the X Games. Yes. 
Yes. So they've never competed against each other. I don't think because they do Mark McMorris does big air and slope style. Whereas Sean White mostly sticks to the half pipe these days, but Mark McMorris just surpassed the total number of medals won at the X games that Sean White previously held as a record. Oh, I mean, the snowboarder that comes to my mind, Chloe Kim, she's been up she's and coming. Absolutely filthy on the women's side of half, yeah, half yeah. pipe. She's like she, youngest to win the snowboarding events that she had done at the X games and youngest to win an Olympic medal at 17. She won the gold medal in the last winter Olympics. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't even really, not to be like rude to all the other ladies who are super extreme in the half pipe, but she is just absolutely dominating. Mm. Yeah. And then on the slope style side, I, I know that there's Anna Gasser, there's Haley Langland, Jamie Anderson still in it, Jules Marino is another one. And then I guess the, I'm just going to flip it around here again because now I'm thinking of the men, but it's on the in the half pipe, Scotty James is absolutely disgusting. He competes with Sean White all the time, if Sean White even shows up. But... <laughs> um, well, I can definitely say that on the skiing side of things, I can't name nearly <laughs> that Wait. many of the ski athletes. Because honestly, I watch the X Games for the snowboarding too, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, is it because skiing's less extreme or is it just like not as much? Not you as can make a literal X with skis and you can't do that with a snowboard. So obviously skiing is more extreme. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> yeah. I think it actually has to do with you, with skiing. You can do a lot more like downhill races. So like I know more downhill skiers, which still isn't that many. So I think a lot more skiers focus on racing and that kind of thing. That would be awesome to see snowboard races though. <laughs> they do that. Yeah. They have those and I, I, it's terrifying. <laughs> it's yeah. so crazy to me because thinking about like all of these athletes, every time I go to watch them, it, they always make it look so easy effortless as if every time they're just going to nail every jump or <laughs> break a hundred miles per hour going down a mountain. It's just incredible to me, like how easy they can make it look. And then not to mention the fact that it's such a wide range because you're saying that there's a 17 year old that won an Olympic or gold medal. And then there's like Sean White, who's like, what, 36 now? I think he's like 55 or something. <laughs> he's just ageless. <laughs> he just doesn't get old. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the higher end, getting close to their 40s. I couldn't find a short number. I really wanted to. I know that 14 is the youngest that someone has won. So anywhere from your early teenage years into your, your late 30s is kind of fair game. So it's not too late for some of you out there. Hmm. All right. I'm going out west. I'm making it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> but there was somebody we just got to display all these new tricks yeah exactly come up with my own name what were you saying emily oh i always associate these competitions with being out west but there's actually like a lot of people that don't come necessarily from out west but come from michigan or from the east coast and i just know that there are like people who are really prominent in these sports that are from the East Coast. And so I have like a nice little sense of pride knowing that we can still hold our own even though we don't have as big of mountains or as steep of pitches here as opposed to out there. Yeah. A lot of people, their home mountain is Okemo yeah. before they move out west. Yeah. Probably snow too. Definitely Mount yeah. Snow as well. Yeah. 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 They even have dedicated ski schools. The guy that I told you about on the knuckle huck, Zeb Powell, actually ended up in a Vermont ski school where you just ski all of the time. It's just this incredible opportunity to get on the mountain every single day and just send it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that explains why they're so good. Yeah. <laughs> the kids are like up to your yep. waist still and they're like in these cool jackets and gear and about to beat me down the mountain. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying you let me down, mom and dad, but I kind of wish I went to ski school. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. We'll put it in our notebook for our, for our kids. Yeah. And by then, hopefully we'll have Ski Speak School ready to go for all of the youngins. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a mountain and on that mountain, we will have a school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can just think about, all I can think about is Zoolander. <laughs> it needs to be at least three times bigger than this. <laughs> Is this a mountain for ants? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good reference. I love that. So, uh. I mean, we're going to probably try to keep up with the X Games. They're actually they're at the end of the January. Wow, I don't even think we mentioned that. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's January 29th to January 31st. And if we did it right, this episode will be coming out right around then, so it'll be perfect timing for you, Ski Fam. Yeah. Woohoo! You're welcome. Yeah. So this this year at the X Games, it's going to look a little bit different, um, you know, and that's, again, because of our good old friend COVID. Ah, uh, yes. But yeah, so they've reduced the number of athletes that they're actually having there. So typically they have, let's say, around 180 or so, and this time they're having 89. <laughs> so they've taken around 100 people off to help reduce the potential spread, I would assume, and to make it a little bit safer for everybody. To put it in a little bit more of perspective, so like for men's snowboard, super pipe, like the biggest event, they usually have 15 competitors, but this time they're having eight competitors. So that's just one of the difference that we'll see through this is just a lot less athletes. Generally, they're, they're not letting any fans in. It's completely closed off to the public. So those big crowds that I mentioned, like for Mountain Snow back in the day, we won't have any of that this year. And yeah, I think part of the reason why there are less athletes is because they are doing less events. They're only doing 14 events versus the 21 events they had last year. And part of that is no snowmobiles, no snow bike. None of, none of those events are actually happening. It's really sticking to the skiing and the snowboarding. And that's why we focused on those for this episode. And so the skiers and the snowboarders won this round against the snowboarders. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's interesting that you said that it's closed off to the public because so ESPN is still hosting the X Games this year, whereas Burton, they have the US Open for snowboarding in March every year at Vail and they canceled it and they canceled it way back in June or sometime over the summer. I forget exactly when. But way in advance, they canceled it. And at that point, none of us really knew if we were going to get out of COVID or how anything was going to look for March of 2021. And they still decided to cancel it because they wanted to take care of all of their sponsors beforehand, make sure that they weren't planning anything last minute, no worrying about traveling. Just really interesting how they decided to do that. And then ESPN decided to keep it going, but they you know, simply kept it closed to the public. Yeah, I think they're confident that since it's an outdoor sport and they're even inviting less athletes that they'll be able to do it all safely. And it makes some sense, right? If we feel safe skiing, then a very controlled environment with a lot of testing for all of these athletes should be able to pull off, you know, an event like the X Games. I was actually looking, there were a lot of other events that were canceled too that were slated for this winter. I think I saw it when I was looking at Chloe Kim there were events that she was supposed to compete in as a lead up to her next Olympic run in a couple years that aren't on the schedule anymore. They're just completely canceled. So these athletes have to find other ways to train and prepare for the Olympics that they're going to be maybe behind from all the cancellations. And so will everybody else, I guess, in theory. It's just like, <laughs> they're all going to be at the same baseline then. Emily's <laughs> like, eh, suck it. True. <laughs> so I think we can wrap this up. Basically, we are going to be following the X Games January 29th through the 31st. We're going to tell you who's winning, how things are looking. That'll be posted on our social media, that kind of thing. Keep your eyes peeled, Ski Fam. We will keep you updated, and maybe we'll learn some new names that are breaking out onto the scene this year as well. Ooh, I wonder. Ooh, yeah. And watch out for the McTardis. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this extreme episode, Ski Fam. <laughs> Extreme! <laughs> Extreme goodbye! <laughs> Extreme deuces! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Alright, bye! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> like, if you guys don't have boobs, it was so painful. It was awful. <laughs> wow, I, and that's a good then, point. Ski fam, yeah. I bet you didn't think you were going to get boobs this episode. Damn. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you got sex and boobs this episode. Wow. We, were so we need to rate this R. R-rated episode. <laughs> <laughs> Triple X episode. <laughs> But anyway, it was not a fun time. But I did get it like a solid six inches of air. We're renaming the episode to be the XXX Games. <laughs> <laughs> Bow chicka wow wow. Thanks for listening.